This is a Frank podcast. Hello, what's up? And welcome to the Extremely Casual Gamers podcast with Ellie, Chris and Guy. Today on the show, we've actually got a giveaway thanks to Logitech for their month of gaming and it's for our PC homies. It so is. they're actually yeah. being treated this time instead of our PlayStation friends. Uh, Guy, you want to remove a common gaming stigma? Yes, I've had enough. And You've I had feel enough. like a lot of people have as well. So we can discuss that at length. Beautiful. Chris, uh, you, you, you want us to think about what our heads up displays would be if we had them in real life? Yeah, because I'm playing Cyberpunk 27 at the moment, 2077, and it's got a pretty advanced HUD. And I was like, man, if I had a HUD in real life, what would I want on it and what would I not want on it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, was that part of the brief? I was meant to write what not, no, not no, no, on no, it. No, oh, no, no. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. You're doing cool. a great job, Ellie. Thanks so much. The reassurance. I really like how you started the show with "What's up" as well. <laughs> did I? I saw you laughing, and I was like, "Why are you laughing at me?" Oh, did she do it? Yeah, yeah, it was really cool, actually. Even um, just said, "I was like, wait, I said what's up." No, it was it me. was Ellie. Yeah. It was me. Not cool enough. <laughs> All right, well, should we get into some listener feedback? Sure. All right, first of all, for listener feedback, we want to thank everyone for their kind words for Guy and his family after last week. Yeah, it was actually really nice jumping onto um, like Instagram and the Extremely Casual group for Extremely Casual Gamers. Thank you for all the comments. Yes, I had a, a rough week last week, uh, Monday in particular. It was just Monday. Mm. It was it was a shit day. I was in hospital all day and then my dog got attacked. So um, lots of really kind words. There was um, I, there was like a, a thread going on of everybody just posting their pets, their yeah. cats and their dogs, like Passing on their love to Nala. So that was really cool. So thank you to everyone that did that. And yeah. how are your polyps? Uh, still yet to get them checked out, uh, but they s- remain in my gallbladder. Okay. Um, and I will be getting more scans in the future. It takes you they're, they're bloody booked out ultrasounds. But the, the good thing is, right, that even if the polyps are slightly dodgy, it, the gallbladder, as Guy informed me, is pretty much a useless organ. It, yeah, yeah, it is useless. So the thing is, the polyps, I mean, if we're going real into the details of it, my polyps, the polyps that they found need to be looked at properly, but yeah. they seem small, which is great. If they are <laughs> nasty, then we can whip that bad boy out. Out and then we'll just see if there's nothing else. There. Just so, you have tiny polyps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got massive polyps the, inside it's me. It's the one time I want to have something small. Like, like, God, please be small. Please be small. Yeah. Um, we just wanted to welcome a few people who have just started listening to our podcast. First of all, Robert Main Prize. Um, they've just started listening, and he wanted to know whether there's a video game that shaped part of our life away from video games. So for him, Tony Hawk shaped his music taste. Oh and yeah, life. it's really yeah. good. Some good music. Yeah. To be fair, music and video games shapes a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Um, Benny Boz. Oh, I'm not going to be able to say the, the surname. Sorry, Benny. Benny Bozji. Uh, binged all the episodes in the last few days, and he's a pilot from the Netherlands, living in Spain, with a home base in Germany, flying all around Europe. So we uh, yeah, we're like, fully global now, guys. Like, that's so cool. Yeah, we're getting listened to everywhere. So thanks for listening, Benny, and also welcome to Charlie Carr. Um, also wanted to shout out a couple of people who are the convo starters in our ECG for ECG Facebook group. Daniel Ferrugia uh, started a conversation about has a game ever hit you right in the feels, and his was Gris. Am I saying that right? Grease Gris. I've never heard of it. No. Ah, yeah, mm. apparently that one hit him in the fields. Uh, uh, Jared. Mm? One that hit me in the fields uh, is, I think, God of War, him and his son. Oh, yeah. A few moments in that that you're like, yeah, that's, it, it didn't make me cry or anything, but yeah. it's kind of like, oh, that's heavy stuff. Yeah. Life is Strange did that to me, actually. Oh, yeah. It was very, very de- uh, deep. I was going to say Devi. Deep and heavy. Yeah. Um, and also, as I've said in the past, Detroit Become Human really got me. It didn't make me emotional, but it got me like existential. It right, really yeah. got me existential. And you well up at Trackmania as well, don't you? I do, yeah. <laughs> That's when you lose and you cry. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, Jared Bryant, thank you for starting a chat about Trophy Hunter Pride and what your um, most proud game is, which his was Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Is am I saying oh, that wow. right? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a big game. Beautiful. And then Jimmy Brown, he gave some anime recommendations for Chris. His is Neon Genesis Evangelion. Okay, Evangel- I've heard of that. That's quite an old but like famous anime actually. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, there's a post on the Facebook group if you want to have a look at that for I will have a whole look. lot of anime recommendations. So thank you for that. Uh, guy. Mm. Uh, what, I listen to, no, no, I listened to the episode so I am caught up with the with the chat about um, Edge Runners. What is up with this microphone? No, it's fine. It's, it's all good. Okay, yeah. sweet. Nice. Um, also, general, generally, Chris's Game Boy, there's been people asking, where did you source the parts from? Ah. Is that your big uh, secret, is it? It's my big secret. No, it's not a secret at okay. all. Uh, the dirty little secret is that you have to spend a lot of money to get it all. 
Oh, okay. So, so just- that's why. But look, what I've done is I brought in, uh, once again, no one listening audio wise will give a shit about this because it's going to be purely visual. Uh, so this is my magnum opus. I said this the other week. <laughs> <laughs> and both Sam and Ellie didn't know what the term magnum opus I meant. Didn't. Neither do I. It sounds like a, it sounds like a polyp disease. <laughs> no, it's nothing as lame as that. Uh, magnum opus is like your life's work, your thing that you you can die now because you've completed your oh. magnum opus. Yeah, I didn't know that either. See, you're I just thought it too was smart. the brand of the case that he's holding. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is my magnum opus. It's like a cool case, but also no, yeah. this is from AliExpress. <laughs> it was four dollars seventy six New Zealand. Oh. Wow. So this is my favorite one I've done so far. It's my Game Boy Color. So this is a second one. You've You've done done another one? Yeah. Oh, my God. And this one's cooler. Oh, my God. So it's my Game Boy (gasps) Color. Oh, and it is colored. That is a nice color. What's that? like? It's like like a teal. It's like a teal, turquoise-y little situation. Um, And it also features a screen that is 50% larger than the original screen. Yeah. Oh, nice work. It's backlit. Yeah. Um, It's also touchscreen because whenever you put one of these – aftermarket screens into a Game Boy Color, there's like a touch sensor thing that you put on this shell and you tap the top to change settings. Yeah. Because my shell is now uh, fully anodized aluminum, it didn't work. So uh, I've had to invest in this brand new one called an AMOLED touchscreen, which came out like two weeks ago. There's a very limited run. I caught wind of it while watching a YouTube video that had come out like 30 minutes earlier, and I bought the third to last one off AliExpress. Holy crap. Good work. Um, So it's great. It's touchscreen. You can change the brightness. You just hold your finger on the screen there, and then you can adjust all these sorts of things. That is awesome. It's sick. It's now got USB-C charging as well. Uh, It also has a... Lithium battery, which lasts even longer than my Game Boy Advance. Yeah. Wow. Because it draws less power because it's less powerful. Can mm-hmm. um, I hold it? You can hold it. It's booty. That is booty. That's why I want to hold it. Yeah, wow. wow. Yeah. Sorry yes. for the very visual sort of element going on here. But, but you we can do. check it out yeah, on we... our YouTube channel. Also, nice. Ellie's filming it for what I assume might be social media. So, social media. Say hi to Instagram. Hi, Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool, man. I had no idea that you were working on a second one. No, yeah, no, no, neither does my wife. You just uh, pulled it out of your bum bum. I did, I, I pulled it out of my bum bum. <laughs> yeah. So what happened was I was like, right, I've got my Game Boy Advance so I can play Pokemon, um, you know, like Sapphire and Ruby and Emerald and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, the ones that really speak to me are the ones that I was playing when I was a kid, which are the OG blue and red and yellow yeah. Yeah. and a little silver gold crystal. And I was like, I remember playing it on a Game Boy and I – saw that you could get the shells and you, I saw there was all this fancy stuff you could get and I was like, done, I'm buying one. That's so amazing. From, from start to finish, how much have you invested in this? In this one? Cash-wise. Okay, so the Game Boy Color I bought, uh, I think I got it for 80 bucks off Trade Me, New Zealand. Oh, yeah. So that's probably, I don't know, 50 bucks American. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the screen off AliExpress, so you buy it off AliExpress if anyone wants to get one of these screens, mm-hmm. and it is provided on Ali- AliExpress from the original manufacturer, so it's not like a fake version of it. Okay. I think it was $85 New Zealand, yeah. so it's not cheap, Okay, and it comes all the way from over there, uh, from over in China, but it's freaking worth it, and it makes it so much better to play games on. Awesome, yeah. Uh, so that's how much that was. The lithium battery was $17 New Zealand shipped to me. Uh, what else does it have? It's got some other stuff in it too. The Just round up, what are, we, what are we talking? Oh, the shell itself was probably 180 New Zealand. Holy shit. I didn't wow. realize it was going to be. No, sorry, 140. No. I got it on special. There was like a sale, so I bought the last one. Uh, yeah, so look, I'm going to say rounding out maybe 400 bucks. Yeah. Okay, but hours of gameplay because you got your cartridge in there, which does it have lots of things in it? Lots yeah, of games? Yeah, it has lots of games, and I can play Pokemon Red, Blue, Silver, Crystal whenever I'm on an airplane, which is the most important thing. Yeah, of that rocks. Um, Dial Up Greg was wondering where you got the cartridge from that has all the Pokemon games on it. Did uh, you emulate that or like did you make that yourself or how did you do that? Listen to that. That gets me. Listen to that, man. This little Gengar and a uh, Nitto Rhino fighting. Uh, I got this Style Up Greg. It's called an Easy Flash Junior. Mm Mm-hmm. You can get that off AliExpress as well, uh, and basically you you get the card. You've got to get an SD card, put it in the side, put your own ROMs on the SD card. Okay. So I, it doesn't come with all the games on it. Yeah. So you did that yourself. I put them on it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I just picked and choose the my favorites and the best rated games. Blah blah. Nice. I've got my little bag, and I've got my uh, trade cable on me as well. And so very soon. You'll be able to cha- challenge me to these Pokemon games. Right now, I've only done Fire Red, and I'm halfway through Pokemon Original Red. Yeah. And then I'll eventually unlock, so you can challenge me to any any game. You can tell me what game you want to fight me at, 
and then I'll be able to battle you. Okay, cool. That's mean. Cool. All right. Um, and lastly, Alan Spring. Chris, have you seen the Witcher anime movie on Netflix? I haven't watched the anime movie. It's about Vizimir. Vizimir. That one. Oh, wow. No, I haven't. I yeah. should watch that. There you go. No, well, I'm not going to. Why? Oh. Because it'll make me want to play The Witcher again. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, no, you were playing Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Stop. I will check that out, though. I completely forgot that that existed. Yeah. So there that's great. Go. I will check it out. Yeah. Thank you for your feedback. As per, you can message us on Instagram, Extremely Casual Gamers Podcast, and also Extremely Casual Group for Extremely Casual Gamers. That's our Facebook group, a private group, where we all hang out and we have a fun little community. And I guess now it's time for Gaming News. Gaming News. <laughs> Gaming News. Fallout games have surged in popularity since the release of the new TV show. Uh, well, that makes sense. That is my yes. news article. Now, I love Fallout. One of my all-time favorite games It actually got me into the world of RPGs is Fallout 3. Uh, I have since played Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, which I didn't really rate. I massively avoided Fallout 76. This TV show is on Amazon Prime. I should have watched it because it is right up my alley. I freaking love the world of Fallout, the post-apocalypse survival mm-hmm. Uh, t- and you know, people have been living in a vault. They come out into the real world, and then they have to battle their way through. I will watch it and do a review. I'll watch a few episodes and do a review on next week's episode. Okay, cool. And we'll do a little bonus potty on the Fallout TV series. I apologize. I've been so wrapped up in watching the Cyberpunk anime and then playing Cyberpunk 2077 and then playing Helldivers with Guy. Nice. Uh, that I haven't got round to it, but I will do that for next week. That's okay. Yeah. There's actually two people who have given little reviews in our ECG for ECG podcast group. Um, Calvin Richardson said he's seen two episodes, perfect adaptation, worth a watch on its own. And then Sean said uh, they convinced their wife and he's really enjoying it because the violence starts and it's over the top, which yeah, is what he wanted. Yeah, that's ridiculous. What yeah. Well, yeah. that's what the combat is like. You can like freeze time, select what body part you want to target, and then you, if you unlock certain perks, perks, there's one called Bloody Mess, which just is over the top, gratuitous, bloody explosions whenever you shoot someone. Wow. Well, Lovely. Um, which mm. is just right up your alley yep. there, uh, Ellie. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right up your alley, Harwood. Uh, so the exact number on Steam, and I can concur that this actually happens to me. So if I watch the Vesemir thing, I will want to watch. I play The Witcher. Yes. So on Steam, uh, Fallout 76 went up 18,000 concurrent players. Fallout 4 went up 40,000. Fallout New Vegas went up 9,000. Wow. So that was just uh, like one day after the TV show came out, basically. Wow. Everyone was straight in watching it, which is pretty exciting. As someone who loves Fallout and has played a lot of them, if you're a hard out, if you're a hard out RPG fan and you want to get into the world of Fallout, play New Vegas. It's older, it's clunkier, it's buggy as, but the RPG systems in the world are just more immersive and there's more going on. Mm-hmm. If you just want to play Fallout and experience the world and you're not too worried about some intense RPG systems, play Fallout 4. Okay. So okay. that's my advice. If you are going to watch the TV show, then get into it. That's my advice there. And um, the TV show, they dumped all of the episodes in, you know, there's all that all there to watch. Go? You know, and it's, you know, you have to do it week by week or the first three to come out. It's, just, it's all there. Oh, so you can just binge the whole thing. That's good. Bloody great. So there you go. Fall out. It, it just goes to prove that if you make a TV show of a game, people yeah. are going to pick up the game again, oh, which yeah. is cool. Totally. Yeah. I have gaming news. <gasps> gaming news. <laughs> Square Enix gives podcast hosts three years to play an excellent game. Oh, wow. shut up. Is this about bloody It Takes Two, is it? No. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and that's made by Hazel Light Studios, yeah, which I you would I'd know if you played up. the game. Yes. If you yeah, had recently seen the starting titles to the game, which you have not. <laughs> yeah, no, I have not. Okay, I'll just shut up. You continue. Uh, Square Enix, the people behind Final Fantasy, have said that the third and final chapter for Final Fantasy VII is due to be released in 2027. The main story apparently is done, and the voice acting should start soon. Okay. So obviously you know that Final Fantasy VII uh, came out in 1997, and they've split it. They've remastered or rebooted it, and the second installation, Reboot, came out very recently. Mm-hmm. I have it. And oh, do you? it's an excellent game. Yeah, how's it from going, what guy? I've been told because I've only played an hour of it. <laughs> so full, full it gives me three years to play the game because it's apparently coming out 2027, which I'm pretty sure will happen because it tracks with you know the release of in betweens one and two. And also 2077 will be 30 years since 2027. Yeah, sorry, 2027. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 years since the um, original came out. Question. Wow. Do you have to play the second one? Because you just went straight into the second one without playing the first one. So why don't you just not play any of them and just go straight into the third one because for an hour? Because if I play the second one, A, I'm, you know, I'm giving myself the the benefit of playing an amazing game, mm-hmm. apparently. And it'll give me a better chance of actually playing the next one because I'll be like, well, I've played the second one. But if I sit here and go, ah, I'll play the third one. 
when it comes out in three years. I just won't do it. Yeah, yeah well, it's I just going to be exactly like the second one that you've. Cur- <laughs> so for people that don't know. <laughs> Uh, Final Fantasy VII, one of the greatest RPGs of all time. You know, it's a, there's, there's a lot of people's almost exposure to an RPG on PlayStation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's got a fond place in a lot of people's hearts. Remastered finally. Uh, Final Fantasy VII is available now. It's been out for a few years. This is part two. Yes. Uh, Guy was sent a code. Very nice uh, offer from Sky, uh, from Sony, sorry. And then he, and I was like, oh, you probably won't like that game, man. You should give it away on the potty. And then he's like, oh, yeah, I could do that. And then the next thing we hear, he's downloaded it, he's installed it, he's played it for half an hour, doesn't know what's going on because it's the second game in a trilogy no, and hasn't played it since. But in the main menu, there's a little recap video of the first game. So that's like two or three minutes long. I got the gist of it. Okay. Oh, I got the gist of the 100-hour RPG. Yeah. I got the gist of it. I don't know what's going on. Hey, in, pre- in previous episodes, you've been telling people to not bother what playing Witcher 1 and 2 and go straight into 3. Just watch a recap on YouTube. You can pull the audio. I said, I said, said to watch a recap on those two because... Because they are really old, yeah. and the actual gameplay is old. Okay. And if they, <laughs> this is very different, right? <laughs> we were given a free code. I don't know. The game is on PlayStation. Okay, no, we'll just leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> so three years time, I will have played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and they'll be ready to go. All right, for here the we next go. One. Okay. If you haven't, what's your punishment? Yeah. Shave my head. Done. Your entire head, including your eyebrows. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pluck your eyelids as well. <laughs> We've had enough. <laughs> Have we? <laughs> Haven't we? Amen, brother. Yeah. We've had enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah bro. It's mostly boomers who I'm talking to here. Ah, oh, yes. But also people of all ages. Mm-hmm. They discriminate. They stigmatize against gamers. Yeah, it's been got any, and this this isn't this isn't the first time you've been hearing this. If you say to somebody, "Oh, I'm playing video games," there are some times where somebody gives you a bit of a weird look. Yeah, they tell you that you're wasting your life. If I was to say, oh, "I watched the whole new season of Stranger Things on the weekend," people are like, "Oh my god, how could episode six? But yep. if I said I played fourteen hours of Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy VII, VII. <laughs> they'd be like, oh, okay. "What a loser!" Like, yeah. it's it's there's, it's a different thing. So I chucked into the extremely casual group for extremely the casual gamers i want to talk on about facebook on facebook yeah i want to talk about how healthy gamers are because there's the stigma that gamers just sit in their basements and they just don't see the daylight this is why i said one of the reasons we started this podcast was to highlight the stigma attached to being a gamer and being unhealthy the image of a gamer has been someone who drinks mountain dew by the liter <laughs> sitting in a curtain closed room playing games for hours never see daylight and while that in itself is okay and actually sounds like a fun afternoon <laughs> we want to highlight the healthy gamers so on this week's episode Basically, tell us how healthy you are. If you are in the mood to actually, you know, divulge these details, tell us what you do, whether it be physically, mentally, spiritually, mm-hmm. sexually, financially. Like, what is it that you <laughs> Please do? Please tell us how sexually healthy you are. <laughs> and guy, While you gaming. For the podcast. It's, it's, it's really, really it's funny because I, did, I didn't actually write sexually in the post, but I've just added that in now. Okay, thank you. Tell us how much. This was extremely casual. What are we doing? Tell us how much pipe you like. Uh, guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and the thing is and thank you to everybody that commented on our group because a lot of people joined in so Kane says I give my gaming room a quick clean open the windows after every session so that it's clean and fresh the next time I use it I used to play rugby have small walks with my son for physical well-being Scotty says I spent years training in ultra marathons and represented New Zealand in obstacle course racing for a few years mm-hmm. really yeah. yeah so Scotty fit fella Jason I consider myself very healthy I exercise six days a week Running weights and yoga, eat mostly whole foods, uh, meditate daily, journal my thoughts, have busy social life, and um, he's he has a strict no touch so like savings account. So, and there were so many comments of people just talking about how healthy they are mm. in all of these different facets of their life. So it's annoying that the ga- you know, the term gamer doesn't matter how many times you read these people saying how healthy their lives are. Yeah. It's just this stigma attached to us being. Complete losers. Definitely. Fat blobs yeah. who don't like to move. Yeah. Get out of breath walking up the driveway. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is exactly why we started this podcast, wasn't yeah. it? And, and I also, from a woman's perspective, wanted to show that, like, girls game too. Yeah. And actually, it's a really even split. And, um, yeah, there's no – it doesn't mean that we're – and into a stereotype we're just people that like to let go of our days by gaming that's yeah. all this has been one of the great things about this podcast is you go oh I do a video game podcast people go oh like quite a few people have gone oh really mm, mm. yeah and I'm like hang on man we've talked about this before like I also do a rugby league podcast you know like I, yeah. I do all sorts of shit this is just one of my other areas of interest and the nice thing about this potty has been the ability for us to almost go hey gaming's not just for weird nerds in their mum's basement yeah 
Sure, it can be, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. But I'm just saying, it's not. Um, yeah. So that's been a really cool thing. What I've got from those people's comments, however, guy, is that I'm a piece of shit unhealthy gamer. Oh, that's true. so you're the serious I'm, I'm the one eating mum's meatloaf in the basement and playing <laughs> World of Warcraft with my mates. So the thing is, it's not just about physical, because you sit here and people like, somebody goes, I, you know, I train for ultra marathons. It's about, it's your mental health as yeah. well, because there are people out there who... Like they play rugby. So they play in a rugby team. They play once on the weekends. They have a couple of training sessions. So in their heads, they're healthy. And they physically, they may be so. But then on Saturday after the game, they punch back 12 beers. They have a few darts. There's yeah. people out there who go out drinking Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and they go and snort something in the in the bathroom. <laughs> wow. So they, it's, I guess it's all about balance. And yeah. even though we've got these people saying how healthy they are, and I know from the three, the three of us, like we all run and I know mm-hmm. none of us smoke or all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, so we, oh, I would run cons- in a while for I, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a few weeks. I consider us healthy and we can preach it as much as we want. But I guess the thing I want to know is like, is, what else can we do to, for that stigma to be removed? Because okay. we can preach it, mm. Yeah, but is it people, because people are more than happy to share their Strava running score on their Instagram. Yeah. But where's about, your platinum trophy count at? Where's your platinum <laughs> trophy count? Where is it you like sharing that you're playing a certain video game? Where's you resharing a trailer for a video game that's coming up? Like people don't do it yeah. because they're scared to being judged. Yeah. People are more than happy to repost a post of, you know, a highlight of a UFC fight. Yeah. And, they, and you're happy for somebody to know. I love UFC mm-hmm. because in your head that makes you a healthy person yes. because it's a physical thing. Mm-hmm. I've had quite a few messages like, and I've blocked these people now. People have been like, Keezy, why are you doing a shit video game podcast? What are you doing? Yeah, really? I've blocked about six people really? that have messaged that in. But like, that's from my radio audience, which is a more tradey backbone of the nation kind of bullshit. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so when they see me sharing warrior stuff, that's all good. Yeah. Car shit, that's all good. Yeah, video game shit, hang on, hang about. You nerd. What the hell? Yeah. And so I blocked a few people like that. So that's quite nice. And uh, But at the same time, I would like to point out that I am sitting here currently deathly hungover doing this podcast. <laughs> and so I, I think currently I am a bit of an unhealthy gamer because the last month has been so many like social occasions and work events and stuff. I haven't had a chance to go running and uh, I'm still eating okay, but I'm drinking a lot of beers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're social and that's health. You know, yes. Social health. Social you health. Know? Yep. That's the thing. And that's what I wanted to make sure when, when I brought this up is that it is about balance. So yeah. if you're hearing somebody talking about they go for a run three to four times a week, and if you, I don't want you sitting there going, well, I don't do that. Yeah. But you could be journaling yeah. every night and getting a solid nine hours sleep. And the person who's running might not be doing that. Exactly. So And you don't have to do every single thing yeah, because then you do burn out. That's yeah. true. And another thing too, think about, as you say, how much telly do you watch every night? You're doing the same thing. You're just controlling what's on the telly, right? Yeah. Uh, how much? How many computers do you sit in front of at work? You are sitting down looking at a screen. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. Obviously, that's to earn an income and this is for your own entertainment. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like we're also preaching to the choir too, probably. The people listening are probably like, yeah, yeah, yeah amen, yeah. which I love. And I would love to hear from people if they have any ideas. Like, what's your like combat? What's your line you use if people do give you shit for game? What Do people yeah, have like one line point. they use that's like, well, actually, I just XYZ? Go, uh, Alt F4 and then walk off. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> that, that's not what I do. I was joking. That's quite a good one. Yeah. That's but, actually a really good one. But send them in, though, as you were saying, to yeah. Extremely, Extremely Casual Gamers Podcast on Instagram or join our group on Facebook, ECG number four, ECG. And we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Let's smash these stereotypes. Hell yeah. I want to normalise gaming. Everyone can be a gamer, no matter what you look like, where you're from. I'm getting a bit too righteous now. I'll just stop no, it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Extremely Casual Gamers Podcast on Instagram. How's your sexual health? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send that through. <laughs> How much? Um, no, 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 no. We didn't have to have this last week. <laughs> Heads up displays. What's that about? <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's not how I'm going to intro this. But seriously, though, I'm playing Cyberpunk 2077 at the moment. I'm really loving it. I'm so deeply immersed in it after watching the anime. Uh, I'm enjoying the characters. I took a wee while to wrap your head around the perk system, which... On RPGs, and you'll know this guy from Final Fantasy, mm. it does take a wee while for you to figure out how everything works. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then after about five hours, you're like, okay, I get it now. I can start implementing. Yeah. I'm yeah. just at that point now, which is great. Yeah. yeah. It has quite an intense intense HUD heads up display. If you don't know what that is, when you're looking at your video game, it's all the stuff on the screen. You've got your map in the corner, you've got your little mission marker, your compass your, across your, the top, a compass like across the top, uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff. And I was just wondering, 
If we had this stuff in real life, yeah. Mm-hmm. First of all, would you want that? And if you did want it, what would you want on it? Yeah. And it's what like, would yeah. you not want? It's like an episode of Black Mirror. Like you get some sort of chip in the back of your head and yeah. then it changes what you see in front of you. Yeah. yeah. Or like Cyberpunk, they literally will remove one of oh, a couple of your eyes and put in cybernetic eyes, oh, yeah, yeah. which you can oh. see and you can scan people. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. So the first thing that is usually found in a heads up display your health. Mm. Do you want a health bar? I think, yeah, I think so. That'd be quite handy. I think it'd be very confronting. I'd hate that. (laughs) I would hate that. I'd get the new eyes and they'd be like, oh, my health bar is low. And no matter what I do. (laughs) How do I fix that? You'd be like, oh, have some food. That'll fix it. Have some McDonald's. And it drops down even further. (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah, the health bar, no. No, no, no. No, No, yeah, good point, actually. It'd be pretty anxiety inducing. Yeah. I'd I'd like to know for the piece of, um, okay, look, I want it if it's good. If it's bad, I don't want to see it, you know? Okay. Yeah. Right, so if you want a, a good full health. head in the sand yeah, so, yeah, type yeah. situation. <laughs> Just tap me on the shoulder if things are going well. If yeah. not, head yeah. in the sand. Exactly. Hard in the sand. I like that. Hard in the sand. <laughs> God, it's good having a back. Wow. It's 50 50, to be honest. You can't give me a compliment. Uh, next thing, time. Right, do you want the time? Do you want to be able to see the digital? I mean, you've got it on your, your wrist, a lot of people. Yeah. you got it on your phone. Would you like to everywhere. see the time? I think it would be quite annoying to see the time all the time. Oh, yeah. You wake up in the night. And you know when you're like, oh, please don't be yes. you know, late. You don't be like five minutes before my alarm. Yeah. And then you look and it is. Yeah. I'd like to live in that denial. Yeah. So yeah, if yeah, I yeah. open my eyes and I could see the time, I'm like, shit. So yeah. maybe you want the time uh, like between the hours of 7 a.m. and so 7 there's, p.m. There's too or something. many settings to set. I'll just look at my watch. Yeah, I won't have the time on my No time. Yeah. All right, no so time. we get rid of the time. No, All right. no health, no time. Mm-hmm. Would you like to have on your heads up display which weapon you're currently carrying on you and how much ammunition you've got? <laughs> Just fists unlimited. Yeah. Or like, but in Grand Theft Auto, if you pick up like a fish, all of a sudden it's just like fish, top right corner, right. and how much damage the fish could do if you were yeah. to whack someone in the head with it. I mean, if I had a if I had a lifestyle that you know required me to probably have weapons, that would be handy. But yeah, I live a pretty casual life. Same. You know. Yeah, you don't spend much time at all in hospital or with people that have been mauled recently <laughs> or anything like that. Yeah, I'd like to say there's a one off, but no. <laughs> uh, so no, no, no for you. No for me. I wouldn't mind it because, as you say, I don't have weapons that often. But yeah. if someone passed me a shotgun, it'd be pretty cool to go shotgun and how many bullets oh, it had. That's true. Or shells. Sorry. Okay. There are Americans listening, so I've got to get my gun stuff right. Shells. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, I'm going to say yes for that. Okay. What about you, Ellie? Yeah, no, I don't think I want a weapon in my hand ever in my life, so I don't want it on my bloody heads up display. Thank you very much. Okay, no, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would you like uh, game progression, like a percentage like of how far through the game you are? I don't think I want that. Like no. your life, though? Yes. Is this life? So like this is showing you you're going to die in 26%. Or oh, it's just like you look at your thing and it's just like, 47% complete. So, like, I'm nearly halfway through my life. Yeah. Oh, no, nah, I don't want to know that. that. I'd, or, like, I'd like a progression for things that I'm doing, like tasks and object, objectives. Yes. Like, so yeah. if I'm at the supermarket and I say, like, okay, I've, I'm 75% of the way through, Yeah. that's yeah. fine. So yeah. that's the next thing, your current quest or side quest that you're on. So yes. it's just like get to ECG. That'd be really helpful. For recording. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. you get there and then it ticks it off and you get some experience points. Tell you what, that'd be yeah. terrible for sexual health. In that situation, <laughs> just as you start, it's like you're ninety seven percent through. You're like, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're gross. <laughs> uh, so, is that a yes for quest mark uh, for like what you're doing, what yeah. quest you're on? And it would help me stay on task and little details. Yeah. I would need that. Really? Yeah. So if it popped mm. up on your eye to say, finish, it takes two, you'd be able to finish it in stay on task. Actually, no, that would, no, no, I don't want it anymore. That would just, <laughs> uh, I'd incite guilt in me, I think. <laughs> uh, would you like, this is one of the ones that pretty much all games share, would you like a mini map in your top right corner? Oh. Because um... I think in reality, there is a wee bit of travel. But you're not constantly moving like you are in a video game. You're at work for a certain amount of, well, you know, some of us are at work for a certain amount of hours. Wow. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Or at home for a certain certain amount of hours. You know, so like maybe once you hopped in a car, a mini map popped up or something like that. But once again, there's too many settings. Yeah. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want the map. I've got Google Maps or whatever. I'll use that. Yeah, I'd phone. like the map if it meant that it would show on the, on the actual map. Like if it showed like my house layout, if it had sort of like key objects that I needed. Oh, that's a good so idea. So like it would be like I could see my toddler. So if yep. I'm in the kitchen, I know Daisy's playing in a room, I could check the mini map and see that she's still there. Yeah, that's and good. And see where my dog is. And then if there's like, where's the TV remote because Daisy's hidden it, it's like pings on my mini map. That would be cool. Yeah. like that. Oh, and it could be that's like when you're in a house and like uh, a lot of games, you'll be able to like, there'll be a shower icon in the bathroom. 
You know what I mean? There'll be a bed icon. There's like a yeah, wardrobe yeah, yeah. icon where you can go to change your clothes. Oh, yeah. A fridge icon where you can go get food and health items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when you go outside, on the minimap shows which herbs around you are pickable. Oh, that'd be helpful. That's to be made into potions. Yeah, like that. That would be yeah. quite cool, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'd be down for that. And also, like, in uh, Cyberpunk, you'd be driving ar- around and there are people called fixers who will give you a job. Oh, yeah, so yeah. So if you're on the minimap and you look up, it's, oh, there's a fixer nearby. I could get a paid job right now. And you go up to them and like, hey, do you want a job? Here which you go. Are, which apparently I need. <laughs> so that'd be real handy. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so I cannot be a do you know what the issue so is? Be a, not a burden on society. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what the issue is? Uh, my wife was recently made redundant and I've been making a lot of jokes about her being made redundant and it's spilled oh, over into this podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologise. You're not redundant at all, guy. Thank you. Yes. You're raising your daughter. Which I needed is, that. Yeah, you didn't need that. I, I sound patronising, so I'm going to move on. Uh, do you want a speedo, a speedometer, when you're moving? Oh, to see how fast I'm bloody cutting shapes yeah. on the D floor or like sure. running around my neighbourhood. Yeah, or even just you're walking, you've got like a, yeah. a, a need for speed style thing that says you're doing 3, 000, uh, three <laughs> kilometres per hour or yeah. miles per hour. That'd be quite interesting, yeah. yeah. Maybe, yeah. Mm, Down for that, for that. all yeah. times. You have to have that at all times. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'll try and break records to get to the fridge and stuff. Or yeah. how fast I do at that time, you know? Nice. Okay. I'm going to say yeah. no. Right. It's not, and information isn't important enough for me. Okay, yeah. fair Speed. enough. Speed, you know. Yeah, fair enough. What about when you're running? That would probably bug me and make me want to run further, which um, faster, which would make me more tired, which yeah, I'd hate. Yeah, true. If I knew yeah, how right. much I was running, I'd be like, no, I want to make it. I try. I try to make like an even number. Like if it was like sixteen point two, I'd be like, oh no, I've got to, oh, have to be sixteen. Got to be yeah. 16. So yeah. I'm just gonna say yes for Ellie. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, and no for Guy, and I'm also a no on that okay. one. Okay. Uh, would you like hints to pop up? Yes. Oh, in yes. your everyday life. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell yeah. me what to do. <laughs> yeah, Tell me where like, the thing is. Yeah. yeah. You wake up. It's just like make breakfast as your side quest, and then you walk into the kitchen, and then like the toast is glowing, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. the and the you know like the bread is glowing, or there's like a little exclamation mark over the uh, f- pantry or wh- yeah. wherever your food is. Yeah. You know, in Uncharted, when there's sort of like a puzzle or there's a bit where you've got to jump around and you just don't know where to yeah. go, and you're just running around, and then eventually the game gives you a hint by like making a noise, and it, it makes it, like a flute noise. It's like, <laughs> a, and like it moves oh. the camera to where it is, and the and the Players like, oh, maybe I should jump up there. I want that. Oh. If I'm like trying to find something in the pantry, or if I'm trying to do something, trying to find a TV remote, mm-hmm. after a certain amount of time, I want my head to go. Ding, maybe Here it it's, is. There it is. Maybe it's over there. Yeah, yeah. So you keen for hints? Yeah, keen for hints. Keen yeah. for hints. Okay, I'll go for some hints as well. Um, do you want a uh, a reticle or like a cross here where you're aiming? In the middle oh. of your screen at all times. Yeah, I'm just imagining it now. <laughs> <laughs> a dot in the no. middle of your eyes. No. No, no that'd be no. super annoying. It'd that be would. good for like if you were holding a ball. Yeah, yeah. And you, someone's sport. like, hey, throw this ball and that little thing up there. You could aim at it and then perfectly throw the ball. Yeah, it'd be good yeah. for sport and stuff. Yeah. It'd be great for sport, mm. but um, not for my life. No, yeah. I don't think I'd have it either. No. Um, so no to the crosshair or aiming reticle. Yes. Yeah. This is one we're all definitely going to want a stealthometer. So that when you crouch down, it shows how seen you are currently. Oh yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being able to hide because yeah. you'd you'd have you'd like and when you're playing Skyrim and you crouch, there's a little eye that's closed if they can't see you, and it slowly opens oh. if you're more visible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So something like that, so you know if you are like if it's nighttime and you're sneaking about because I know Ellie, you do a lot of this. Oh, this is all up me, <laughs> Ellie Howard. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you'd, you'd have. And you could know whether or not, like, if you're playing hide and seek, they definitely can't see me because it's so dark. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be cool. quite good. Yeah, and you could burgle people. See, I'd like the oh, I'd, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one too far. Yeah, um, I kind of like the. I want the opposite. I want you know how it's like um like it detects it shows how much noise you're making and like in what direction. I want that, but I want it to be able to tell me what direction there is somebody chewing really loud. So if I go oh. into a room and it picks up somebody chewing, I want it to be like pointing at that person so I can not sit next to that person. Oh, that's a good because one. Because I hate loud chewing. Yeah. So if I sit down at a shared table and then all of a sudden I'm sitting next to old Crunchy McGee, I'll be <laughs> yeah. gutted. But my reticle, you know, my soundometer will have told me no. Oh, my gosh, I sit like that. Else. I just want like a full-on sensory meter. So like tell me where it's really loud. Tell me where it's yucky to touch. Tell me what's too bright in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you might find all... that the whole world is full of those things. Yeah. No, that's a good point. It is. <laughs> you just go outside. just like <laughs> massively overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> just go back inside. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. A quiet cafe. I was sitting there. <laughs> 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 so are you a weird no chewing person? I don't love – do you know what I hate is people – People slurping their soup. 
It oh, really enrages me for some reason. It's the sound. Uh, oh no, yeah, it's the. It's I've not never so been much. around a soup slurper. I've never really? even been next to someone drinking a soup that's I, slurping. I, just, really? I hate slurping in general. It's yeah, not just, just slurping. Do you like, know what I hate? And I know we're getting off topic here, but when somebody has a tea or a coffee mm-hmm. and they go, oh, they, 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 they go like this. Oh. I can like, imagine you doing no, that. No, I don't. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it's, like yeah. every, it's like they're drinking the elixir of life and every single slurp they add, like they take, like they add five more years onto their life. Just, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I hate it. Just blow on it, drink it normally, I and agree. if it's too hot, let it sit. Yeah. Do you know what's interesting? I just don't care about if, if someone's like, so in Japan, right? Mm-hmm. I'm one eighth Japanese. Yes, I've heard. Just yeah. FYI. Mm-hmm. I'm going to reference that several more times okay, throughout cool. this podcast. Okay, <laughs> uh, cool. The like if you go into a place and order ramen, mm-hmm. it's a big bowl of soupy noodles. The whole idea is to slurp the shit out of it. They I, are all in there slurp and sucking the noodles up. Yeah. That's just how you eat it. That's just the noise you make when you eat. I love that. And yeah, that's fine. They do that. I just will not be going to those restaurants. No, neither. Oh no. I'd love yeah. to go to Japan, but I wear headphones. Yeah, good point. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. I, and I don't also don't mind people crunching. It's like, hey, you're enjoying your shit, man. All goods. Yeah. You, you hoe yeah. in, buddy. Nice. No. Fair enough. How not about, yet. Oh. What about someone uh, crunching the ice cubes at the end of their drink? Guy, I don't do that. No, one of your very close friends used oh, to do that, Jamie. and you hated that. <laughs> no, because what he did is it was like a, it was like a sport for him. He is he loved he looked forward to it so much to finish his drink, and then he'd be like, oh. Oh. like he would like like he'd like a little piglet. So uh, yeah, I hate that. Yeah, yeah fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Anything noise related that's chewing. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Hate fair it. enough. Do you know what I want on my head? I want on my heads up display. It's just like a bowel meter, so I know how far off my next poo is. And so, like, <laughs> I think do it's I- bowel. <laughs> Sorry, bowels. I want to know, like, should I have a shower or am I only like half an hour off having a poo? Because you, should I wait? Because you, you famously, know? you know, need a shower after a poo. I eh? do. Yeah. I prefer it. And there's nothing worse than having a shower and then your body's like, "Hello, here comes little poo poo." Oh, I hate it so much. So I wish I knew when it was like fully about to emerge. So I- God, this is graphic. Is this because Guy's back? Is this is, sorry? Is this what happens? Am I, sorry, it's true though. I just want to know when I'm actually gone because it Here's feels like tip. I need is to. It, is it that bad for you that it, your body doesn't give you any warning? No, is it, it just does. like by the way, like I'm just chilling. Just by like, the way, the no, by the way, get the shower running. No, yeah. sometimes it gives me too much warning, and I think, oh, here it comes. Sit down. I'm like. Oh, no, it's not quite there yet. And I'm like, do I shower or not? Do I shower or not? So this is a big morning issue for me. Yeah. So I want to know exactly when that. Do you drink coffee? That, uh, yeah. And sometimes it helps, and then sometimes it doesn't quite help. But then sometimes I want to have my coffee like later at work, and I'm like, oh, do I? Mm, what do mm, I do there? Right. Yeah, it's quite the pickle I get into every day. Because I so. do know that girls don't, girls don't like going number twos at work, like in the in the cubicles. Girls are so weird about like blowing out a cubicle. Yeah, I don't enjoy it. Yeah. Because like girls will go to the toilet, Sit in the cubicle, make sure there's no other girls in there. Mm. And then if they do need to do ablutions, they'll be stoked <laughs> that there's no one in there. But then the moment they hear that door open, they're like, <gasps> Yeah, that's like, no, awful. And they don't they just stop. Yeah, I wait they, for a flush and then just, land the land the cable and then <laughs> and then wait for the, the <laughs> The hand dryer. Guys, we need to have Sorry. a meeting about how to subtly <laughs> say certain things. Sorry. Because we're really <laughs> Land Sorry. the cable, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife would rather drive home than go at work. Yeah, wow. yeah, right. There you go. And yeah, apparently yeah. there was someone at her work who was like famously smashing it out and like <laughs> all of her workmates didn't know who was doing it. And they were like, who is doing this? And she's like, no, seriously, Chris, it was terrible. <laughs> well, if we're on this convo, we may as well go down the yeah. rabbit hole. Um, yeah, sorry um, about that. Here's the last thing. Yeah. Do you want a compass slash a quest arrow? That points to where, like, so you've got a compass and it's like, mm-hmm. go to work, and then there's a thing on the compass that you know you're facing it, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Really like, cool. It tells you where your objective is. So yeah. Like, if you're going that you're like, Oh, uh, it's this way. Oh, okay. I'm going to walk towards it. I don't think I need that. If I've got the task list there or the, you know, the yeah. quest list, I think I'm, that's fine. Yeah. That's what I need. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you don't sorry. want a compass? No, I don't, no, I don't compass. think so. All right. Do I? No, I don't think so. Well, okay. that seals the deal on the heads up display. I will lock all of that in, and when the te- technology comes around, we will. Oh yeah, thank you so fair. much. To yeah. be fair, we could walk around with like those meta. Um, yeah, quest. Oh, what oh, meta quest. The eyewear vision things. Quest. Yeah. Visit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, oh yeah. Do you reckon they've got they- a poo display on there? No, <laughs> Ellie. God. <laughs> I 
I have some exciting news. Oh, what is that? Exciting we, news. <laughs> we, sorry. We have a giveaway that is not PlayStation related. Yes. Oh, been, my God. Xbox stuff. Here we go. <laughs> if you're a PC gamer. Oh. <laughs> no, this is, so this is awesome. So Logitech's, uh, Logitech G's month of gaming is back this year. Logitech fans have a chance to win a $15,000 trip to Tokyo when they purchase a Logitech G or Astro product from participate, participating retailers. And you've got to enter your receipt at the, um, the website online. Um, so the team of Logitech have jumped on board and they've hooked us up. Well, they're hooking you up because they're doing a month of gaming and week three, which is now, is PC Gaming Week. Nice. So if you're a PC gamer, Logitech have got some good deals and they're going to hook us up with a Logitech Pro X Super Lite 2 gaming mouse. Wow. Yes. This Listen. thing's valued at 350 bucks. It's super, super good. It's got a good feel to it. It's super responsive. It's just... It's the Mac Daddy of computer ma- mice? Mice? Mice. 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 It's mouse. the Mac Daddy mi- mouse. Yeah. Nice. So we've got one of these to give away. So cool. all you've got to do is head on over to our Instagram, which is Extremely Casual Gamers Podcast. There is a picture. There's a post. Just comment on it. Boom. Just do, You can comment whatever you want. Comment something funny. You can comment being like, I'd like to win this, please. Yeah. Or you could just comment an emoji. As long as you comment on that post, you go in the draw to win the... Uh, the Mouse? The mouse. Sorry. Yeah, was it a mouse? <laughs> <laughs> so you were good. Logitech Pro X Super Light 2 gaming mouse. It cool. looks really cool. I wish I was a, a PC gamer because mm. then I could understand... The, no, the severity of this match. If there's yeah. one thing we've learned about you this episode, guys, you're, you're very un PC gamer. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Nice. All right. Yeah. Extremely Casual Gamers podcast on Instagram if you want to enter for that. Yes. Thank you, Logitech. That rocks. What are you guys playing this week? Well, I'm really excited to talk about what I'm playing this week. Oh, what right. is it? You go first. All right. So, Helldivers 2, continuing to play that, right? Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I've also yeah. started playing. <laughs> Final Fantasy. Titanfall 2. Okay. Oh. Titanfall 2 came out in 2016 and I've been meaning to play it. And I just I just wanted a linear storyline. So you just start a mission, you do a mission, you go to the next one. Mm-hmm. And I want a first person shooter. And this ticks all of those boxes. Basically, there's a big war going on. You're on one side, baddies are on the other. But the cool thing about it is set in the future. You are a pilot, so you run around on the ground with your guns shooting, but you also are in control of a giant robot titan that you get to jump into and shoot up in the robot, and then you jump out of the robot, and then your robot helps you, and you talk to your robot. It's really cool. Okay. It's got a great reviews. Everybody loves it, so I'm playing Titanfall 2, and I'm loving it, and... I'm also playing again. It takes two. <laughs> yeah, My so wife and I started playing it the other nights. We've 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 already clocked before, but now we're playing it from the other perspectives. Because oh, you play cool. as a husband and a wife. I played as the husband last time. Yeah, I'm playing as the oh, wife. Now you'll time. see things from her perspective. Exactly, nice. and there's like because there's certain things that the the female character in the game only she can do. Same with the guy. Yeah. So I've only, essentially you've only I've only played like half the yeah, game. Yeah, true. That's a good point. You play it twice. Yeah. So I'm, you're basically playing it twice. I know what happens, but I'm just doing it differently. Yeah, that's. And cool. also, I just want to be able to say that I've beaten it. Takes two before Ellie. Oh, By the way, I was watching a review the other day on YouTube uh, and he referenced the elephant scene and It Takes Two and oh, showed yeah. a clip of them dragging this elephant. Yeah, yeah. spoilers. Yeah. yeah, and he's yeah. just like, I would never emotionally recover from that. And I'm like, oh my God, what is this scene? Yeah. There, there's so many Brutal. emotional scenes I've you know witnessed in games, Red Dead Redemption 2, The Last of Us, stuff like that, but you're witnessing that. Mm. Whereas that particular moment in It Takes Two, you're doing it. You're the one yeah. waterboarding you're the elephant. You're doing it. It's okay, don't, don't say what it is. I'm not yeah, going to yeah. say what it is, no. but it is... <laughs> way more intense than what I was anticipating. Right. So basically yeah. I'm playing all the twos. Helldivers 2, Titanfall 2, It Takes Two. That's Beautiful. What I'm doing this week. Nice. Just okay. to go along with Ellie's poo chat, just twos. <laughs> Number twos. Uh, bring it on. I'm going to beat you with It Takes Two now. I've decided yeah. I'll be popping a sea legs this evening and I will be <laughs> clocked in the morning. No, I won't. Um, I was going to say, there's a huge yarn. It's like the biggest yarn you've ever spun. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, what am I playing? I hear you ask. Uh, what are you playing? <laughs> I'm playing Stardew Valley. I've been playing heaps of Stardew Valley. I've just upgraded to my first upgrade of my house so I'm very excited about that I've got my kitchen now so I can cook food um, and have you got your own bedroom yes okay. yeah so now I've got my own bedroom separate bedroom yeah. and a separate kitcheny yeah. lounge thing yeah or are they, just, are they the same I actually can't remember I literally just got it before I came to the potty so I can't I haven't fully studied it haven't set up my space yet but I'm very excited for that um, also Sam so Sam downloaded Helldivers 2 on the weekend. This is Good Sam, man. your partner, Sorry, Sam. my partner. I should have Good specified. Man. Yeah, he he downloaded it. Um, and he, over the weekend, played like 12 hours of it. Wow. He is addicted he to it. He loves it. Yeah, he's obsessed with it. And he's like, oh, Ellie, oh, 
I love this game. It's just brilliant. Yeah. And so now I'm thinking, like, am I missing out? Because it doesn't look like my kind of game, to be fair. It, it looks a bit shooty. But a bit shooty. Yeah, a bit shooty. <laughs> um, but the way he's raving about it, I'm like, maybe it's the I'll team, give it a go. It's the team bonding aspect. It's the getting out alive, going in, doing a mission, getting out alive together. Okay. So what's like the aspect. law, the role playing part of it as well? Of like, you're doing this for democracy. Like, okay. You jump, you land in on a planet, and every single time you complete a mission, you liberate that planet by just a percentage. Like the, okay. the whole community's got one goal in mind. Yeah, okay, but it's quite heavy combat is what we're saying. Hugely it's, heavy it's, combat. It yeah, is entirely okay. combat. Pop okay. a few sea legs. <laughs> yeah, all right. No, I might give it a go. Maybe four tablets. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And yeah. then get into it. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah but yeah. mainly Sardew Valley for me this week, yeah, I nice. think. Yeah, nice. Do you want to know you? what I'm playing? Yes, Chris, what are you playing? What are you playing? Uh, I will be finishing up Pokemon Red. I'm currently doing something that I never did when I was a kid, and I don't, don't know if you did this guy. No. I was like, stuff it. I might have a crack at trying to complete the Pokedex. I definitely intended 150 Pokemon yeah. in the yeah. originals. Yeah. Completing it means you capture all 150. Oh, I've got to catch them all. You got. Oh, yes. Is that what the tagline they means? They sang oh. about it constantly. No one actually did it. And I know it's not worth it because all you get is a little like thing that pops on your screen that says, congratulations, here's a fake certificate from Nintendo saying I caught them all. But yeah. I've never done it before. Oh, okay. So. And it might be nice to have one game because I've got trade cables and stuff that has every single Pokemon on it. Yeah. So if I'm ever playing one of the other ones and I'm like, I wouldn't mind this Pokemon, I know I've got it over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and okay. so I can trade it. So I was just like, I might, I'm probably going to fizzle out on that. I'll probably give up. I know there are certain Pokemon that are freaking hard to catch, especially in the Safari Zone. Am I right, Ellie? Oh, I mean. Uh, and so <laughs> Which I'll, one's the hard ones in the Safari Zone? Chansey. Oh. Uh, Tauros, Kangaskhan. Pen- Pinsa? Pinsa or Pinsa's Scyther. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so Scyther. So they're real punishes to catch. Okay. Um, but I'll have a crack. And then I'll also be playing Cyberpunk 2077. Of course. Freaking loving it. Awesome. Weird. Have you guys ever had this? It's a game I only like to play at night. Oh, really? No, I get that. Because it's always dark and like neon sign. And then if it's oh. light outside, it's quite, I don't know, it just feels weird. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Stray's a bit like that, actually, because it's all quite dark, quite dark. and dark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm. I, I only like playing it at night. So Fair I enough. haven't really played it during the day yet. And then every time I'm on at night, guys, oh, I've got no friends. Can you play Helldivers with me? I'm like, oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not reacting. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have your back, buddy. <laughs> not reacting. <laughs> so hey, that's what I'm doing. Thanks for hanging out with us this week. Um, follow us on Instagram, Extremely Casual Gamers Podcast. Uh, join the chat. ECG for ECG on Facebook is our private yep, Facebook group. group. Yep. Um, we're also on YouTube if you want to watch these episodes um, visually. You can actually see our faces. Um, and don't forget, we've got that Logitech giveaway. It'll be live on our Instagram right now. So just go and comment on it and you're in the draw to win the mouse. Yeah, so, and like, subscribe, download, and tell a friend about us so that yes. we can grow this puppy. Review the podcast. Give us some stars. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.